What is special about circle is that it's a really an ancient practice. There's no secrets or mystery to it. It's just reclaiming the opportunity to really be authentically, fully present with one another around a purpose that they share. It's beautiful it's coming back. You cannot not sit in circle, but we have forgotten that we are sitting in circle. It's sort of the room or the container for all relationship and all gathering. You'll see circle elements in a lot of the other practices, World Cafe, Appreciative Inquiry, Open Space, all employ elements of circle, again, because of the shared leadership and the relational awareness. You know, when you're all sitting there looking at each other, fully and not sitting behind tables playing with your blackberries or shuffling papers on the table, you really pay attention. If you call it into a circle, it's almost like you're accepting that you don't know the answers necessarily. You're, you're allowing other people to meet with you on equal ground. One of the other powers of circle is that it reveals uh, what I believe is a deep truth that leadership is really a relationship rather than an individual and that we all share the obligation and responsibility to create, to co-create the reality in which we live. It was really inspirational listening to so many people who seem to clearly be warriors of the heart. And I can see just the process of the circle helped me move out of my mind and into my heart. The circle basically brings power to the space between us as opposed to my ego to your ego. It really nourishes a space in between. If we pay attention to do this well, in a conscious way, in a mindful way, one of the things that happens is that we build a different platform. And I think every time you create a platform, it creates another set of possibilities. Oftentimes when we work in circle, we invite people to bring objects and put it in the center of the circle. Sometimes they reflect the purpose of the meeting. Sometimes the objects reflect the collective memory of a company, the successes of the company. Um, those objects provide a way to remind us of why we've come together. I brought this beautiful rock from the North Shore of Lake Superior, um, a granite rock which has been smoothed for millions of years by running up against other rocks in the lake. And this is our real goal in being together as human beings, is to become smooth, to learn from each other, to get our edges bumped off, and this is what I hope to learn how to do better. But to really have these principles have integrity, you've got to have great invitation. Mm -hmm. The host holds the responsibility for inviting this, the group into practicing circle, calling the question forth. There are some clear things that you, you do as a circle host. One is that you talk about circle agreements, and those agreements are quite simple. It's speak with intention, just reminding people to say what's relevant and what's needed to be said into the circle. It's not chatting. Ch circle isn't chatting. Um, it is speaking with intention, listening with attention, and then taking care of the group. Things like looking for underlying patterns, noticing what's happening energetically, you know, is energy low, is energy high, is it time for another question, would pausing be a good thing to do right now? Um, it's perfect if you can have a circle guardian that can also attend to the energy, so work with the host, maybe sit across from them and kind of, you know, remind us of time or um, say, wow, we just heard something big, let's just take a breath. So a circle guardian is great. And sometimes you have that and sometimes you don't. Sometimes the host has to guardian. It's nice to separate those two functions because it gives the possibility for the host to also be participating as an equal member because you're not holding all the power of the timing or you're actually distributing the power. And in a third function can be the harvester or harvesters who on behalf of the circle help pick up the fruits of the conversations and what is the clarity that is emerging or what is deeper questions that we could be invited to go deeper with. We still come into the circle with all of those things that we bring from outside, um, all of those issues and oppressions and all those things to come into circle. However, being in circle for me is a great place to start. That form, that hearing all voices, the not one person standing up front. For me, those issues come in, but circle is a great place to name them, to notice them, to begin to work them. So it's not that coming into circle makes you equal, it's actually that there's a possibility of moving toward equality in circle. To come together, sit together circularly, and speak why you have come and what your purpose is, and then listen to other people why they have come is an incredible way to start up any process. And I don't think there's any substitute for it. <laughs>